I want you all, I'll, he won't ask, he's gonna say a few words now, and I will tell you admission is a free will offering. It all goes to the musician. So please give generously and show your appreciation uh, in the offering plate on your way out. And now I hand it over to Seth, welcome. Okay, uh, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay, um, I've got a lapel mic on, so I hope it works well. Good afternoon to everybody. Thank you so much for coming out on a Sunday afternoon. I do appreciate that. Um, unfortunately, as are a lot of churches, uh, the organ's in the back. So you're not gonna really get to see me play. Uh, I am recording this for my YouTube channel. If you're interested in checking out my YouTube channel, just go to Seth Phoenix on YouTube and it'll take you right to my channel. So I'll have it uploaded in a couple days. Um, the organ itself is uh, originally built by Bill Bryce, and he lived, I believe, in Charlestown. And so he's a local organ builder. The pipes are from, I hear, about three different organs. So he took the pipes out of different organs and then put them together and put them in here. I kind of did a count on the stops and I come up with about 1,100 pipes in this organ, give or take. It might be less. The organ is much more than what you see on the case front. Those pipes all speak <clears throat> and I will show you those in just a moment. But behind it, inside the case, there's all these pipes. Now this particular organ has two keyboards, two manuals. So the bottom manual is called the grate, and then the top manual is called the swell. The swell is actually in its own box, and that has louvers or swell shades on the front, and there's a pedal down that you operate with your foot down on the, the bottom section. And as you open that up, the louvers open, and it makes it louder or softer. And so it's under expression. And I will be featuring that in a few of the pieces. Um, are there any questions? Okay. Oh, there are foot pedals as well. Um, and some of the pieces will be using those and some will not. And I'll walk you through that as, as we're going. I'll let you know. So I'm going to pop this off for a minute. And then I'm going to pop upstairs and uh, I'll be back. Whoops, I'll be back on the mic in a minute. Okay, here we are. Um, for those of you who can and want to crane your neck around, uh, check out the organ. As I said, the pipes in the front do speak. Uh, the middle pipe here, the biggest. One is this note right here. With the organ, there are, I told you you'd be educated, didn't I? Wasn't that somewhere in the, the thing about learning about organs? Um, the organ, each stop is numbered. And we have eight foot, four foot, two foot, and 16 foot. Now the eight foot pipes, lowest note, that one there is eight feet long. They do graduate up from there. Not all the pipes in that rank are eight feet long. Then we have the octave above. So together they sound like this. And then we also have a two foot pipe again. The bottom pipe is two feet long. Whoops, it doesn't, there we go. So with all those together, we sound like this. Okay. Now those are the regular organ sounding pipes that we have. Then we have other pipes that sound like flutes.
And we have things that sound like strings. And we use those in, organists use those in combination so that it gets a broader sound, it gets a, a different sound for different pieces that, that we're playing. Um, there are also on this particular organ some very fiery uh, mutations. And the mutations are the harmonics that you hear in the pipe. So if we play this, you don't hear it, but in there somewhere you hear this and this. So with the uh, with the mutations, it makes the, the sound brighter and it brings out all of those, all of those uh, harmonics that are in the pipe. And it, uh, it can fool your ear into thinking you're, you're listening to something else. And I will actually do that a little bit later on in the program when I get to the musette. Um, let's see, what, oh, swell box. So this is the swell, and as I open the box, you heard it get louder and softer. So those are the basics of the organ. Seth, yep. I forgot the reeds. Oh, I forgot the reeds. We do have reeds on this organ. We have one trumpet stop, and this is very fiery. This is inside the swell box, so you can close it down. And it does have a four foot clarion, but what that does is it borrows from the eight foot trumpet. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> Um, that is the only reed stop on this organ. Now, this particular organ, uh, the great, the bottom manual, it borrows a lot from the top manual, from the swell. So it has some uh, stops that are, are all of its own. And then it borrows a bunch from the swell. So you can actually have the great under expression. The strings and the, the uh, other eight, eight foot pipe that I had on were inside the swell box. Okay, uh, I'm saying okay a lot. I'm gonna stop. Oh. Okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you, yes, all right. So the program today is a bunch of very short pieces. I know that you see that there's a lot of things. I think there's about a dozen listed. Um, these are all pieces that I would play during a church service. Um, the longest one is gonna be the Allegro by Guimont. And these are all pieces that don't really ever get heard. And the reason for that is if the, like the guimont is something that I would start uh, 15 minutes before the, the service and, you know, people are chatting, they're talking, they're catching up on their week. So they don't really listen to the prelude. Uh, the offertory, a lot of times, it depends on how many people are in church, how long the organist has to play for the offertory. And you might get cut short, so you have to, you know, end the piece and start the doxology because everything has to move on. Usually the postlude, people are headed out, so that doesn't get heard much either. Um, I know there are some congregations, some of the folks here today, who actually have the, the postlude as part of their service, and they do sit for that until it is over, and it's wonderful. So. What I would like to do is start with uh, something, it's, it's by uh, John Keeble, 
and it's a double fugue, and I am going to use the flutes for this. So here we go. The next piece is by Josef Reinberger, and he wrote a lot of pieces of music, and they're all, a lot of them are really, really intricate. This one is not too bad. It is a trio, so it's three different voices until you get to the very end when there's a chord. And 
This one uh, includes the pedals. So it's, it's right hand, left hand, and pedals all together. Um, it does use the, a little bit of the swell box. Um, I'm gonna be using the diapasons, which are the, the organ-y organ sounds that you hear. And then in the swell, I'm gonna use that, but I'm also gonna be using a four-foot flute and the two-foot flute. So the left hand moves throughout this entire piece. Uh, it's just, it never stops. Uh, in the pedal, I am, I'm walking myself through the stops here. Um, we're gonna be doing the Lieblich Gedeckt and also the eight foot Gedeckt. Now, the 16 foot, as you can imagine, the lowest note is 16 feet long, and that is this pipe. We have two 16 foot on this particular organ. We have that one and then we have one that's a little bit louder. And that's the foundation like when, when playing hymns and things like that and you get that really good boomy boomy going on. All right, here we go. Let's try it again. particular keyboard, these particular keyboards are very, very touchy, and if I drag my fingers across any other keys, they do sound. So, I apologize for that. The guimau, 
This is, I'm going to be using the presets. Um, we have eight presets on this organ, and what that means is the organ is able to store different stops that I have put down or have selected. Um, and so I'm hoping that I'm okay with doing this. Uh, it's a challenge. I'm not used to using thumb pistons, so I did do some work yesterday and I, I, I think I'm gonna be okay with this. Everybody having a good time? Oh good, all right, just check in. You're awful quiet.
The next piece I'm going to play with your ears just a little bit. So the right hand is <clears throat> going to be using a four-foot flute, so it will be an octave higher than expected. Eight-foot, by the way, is just regular piano pitch. So when you play an eight-foot stop, middle C is the same on the piano as it is on the organ. So I'm going to be using a four-foot flute. And I believe that this flute is a square wooden pipe as opposed to a round metal pipe. This is going to be manuals only. So I don't know how many people know that it is Cesar Franck's 200th birthday year. So I figured before the end of the year, I better have a little bit of a nod to Cesar Franck. This is an excerpt from uh, his second, uh, excuse me, third uh, organ chorale in A minor. Uh, this piece actually happens to be in A major. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a, just an excerpt. Um, the, the piece is uh, fairly long, it's about oh, 15 or 16 minutes, but this is just a little tiny portion of the middle section, and it has been edited by a gentleman, gentleman by the name of A.M. Henderson, and he actually added the ending onto this. So the last um, two measures are not francs, but they sound very good. This uh, piece is going to be using the, uh, sw the swell strings. So I'm going to have the, these guys going. Now, this organ also has something called a tremolo. And this is w a wind-operated whirligig, if you will. It's, it just goes around and around, and it kind of adds the to the to the pipes. So this is what they sound like without it. And then with it. So let me set the uh, set the stops for this, and then we will begin.
my mic's not working. Interesting. There we go. Okay. Um, and you heard it get louder and softer, hopefully. Um, I did that on purpose. Um, Musette. Ah, now we get to talk about this. Have no idea how to pronounce this French man's last name. Dandrio, something like that. As an American, it's kind of hard to pronounce things like French names. Um, and fine. Oh, the Musette is in here. So Musette is actually an indoor bagpipe. So I've tried to emulate a bagpipe with the stops on the organ. Um, and I'm going to use some of those mutations like we were talking about and see if we can fool your ear into thinking I'm playing a bagpipe. So we have that and we have that. Um, left and right and the box open. Okay, I think we're going to try this. This organ has a crescendo pedal, 
So it's, it's, uh, it adds stops. Uh, the more you open it up, the more stops get added. So we're going to just, here we are. <laughs> and uh, if, if I do this correctly, there will be a surprise at the end.
the chimes came on the grates, and I think I had the crescendo pedal open just a little bit. We are going to take a five minute break, um, hop up, get uh, uh, you know blood flowing back to your legs. I'm going to reset some of these uh, presets, and uh, we'll be back in a couple minutes. All right, let's get going here. Um, nice to see so many familiar faces, and um, this is being broadcast on Zoom, and I know at least one person who I know is, is watching on Zoom, so I thank her for that. Um, as we continue on, I am going to play another Baptiste, and this guy is French, and this is going to be nice and, well, as soupy as this organ can be. Um, not quite as soupy as the frunk, but I am going to uh, use the, the strings and the flutes and try and, try and get it so it's nice and, and soupy. Uh, now what you have to understand again, talking about being, playing in church and having having prepared music and then all of a sudden you find that you can only play half of it because that's all that it, it's needed. Um, so a lot of these pieces that I'm playing tonight, I've played parts of them at different church services here and there, um, but not all of them, so it's, I'm really happy to be able to do that. So, communion. The title of this is, uh, well, it says what it is, but you don't necessarily have to use it for that. There's a bunch of things that are called offertory, there's things that are called prelude, things that are called postlude. Um, they didn't worry about, you know, naming each piece like communion in A or whatever. Um, so you'll find that there are a lot of pieces of music out there, especially by similar composers or the same composer, that are named exactly the same thing, but they are totally different pieces of music. Um, but we are going to try this Baptiste Communion.
too well on the right hand. It happens. So organists do learn to work around things. And the uh, trumpet, the excuse me, the cornet, cornet voluntary, the cornet voluntary, um, will be a good example of that, and that is coming up shortly. The next piece is an adagio by an 18th century composer named Bennett. Uh, where is he here? Somewhere in this book. This is manuals only. And uh, I'm going to use one of the mutations on this just to try and give it a little bit more interest. It's, it's one of those pieces that once you start playing, it goes right to the end. There really is no breathing, no breaths, no phrasing. And so to try and make it a little bit more interesting, I am going to be adding this stop, which actually it comes off of this note and so you will be hearing that uh, hopefully my roar flute will work for this and this is um i don't know if i said it before this is also manuals only stomp that I had on in the swell, it, it kind of adds a uh, certain uh, like Baroque feel to it. It's just, it's wonderful. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, now we get to the fun piece. So this, I was going to use the trumpet only on this piece of music. And the trumpet is out of tune, but we're not going to worry about it. We're going to use it anyway. Um, but it's, uh, one of the notes that is kind of primary to the piece, it's in, it's in, uh, D minor, and middle D is something that is, keeps coming up throughout the whole piece of music, and it gave up the ghost. So, uh, it kind of sounds like this. There you go. And the one next to it sounds like this. Whoops, where is it here? Come here. 
And that other one sounds, oh, it's sounding, wow. Okay, um, well, let's see if the dust has settled. This begins, it begins with, um, it begins with an organ portion, which is rather slow and, and um, lethargic, if you will. Uh, and then the trumpet or the, the cornet comes in uh, for the second section. And it, they talk back and forth. So you'll hear, the, you'll hear the, the, the cornet playing its little thing and then the organ will echo it and it'll go back and forth. Uh, it's it's quite a, a fun fun piece to play. Uh, it it does move right right along in, in spots, and I tend to trip over my fingers. So we might have a little little interesting things there. I'm trying to get all these stops down here. I need that. I need that. I need that. I need that. And then oh, and that. There we go. And the great we're gonna have that organy diapason, we're gonna have a flute, we're gonna have the four foot octave, um, which is the octave higher of that organy sound, and then we're gonna have the four foot flute. So we have this in the, on the great, on the left hand. And then we have this in the right hand, so don't be scared. Okay, so here we go.
Yeah. That wasn't so bad, was it? All right. Oh, pass it out. Let's see. So I have, I have little sticky notes here with all the, the different stops that I'm using for each piece. And on that piece that I just played, I had the sticky note stuck in the middle of the page and had to get it off in the middle of the piece. <laughs> so, um, I, my hand came back and it went to the wrong manual. But it worked out in the end. All right, we are going to do a lovely good deck. So this is an eight foot and this is just such a nice stop. And this is another one of those back and forth pieces. So that's in the, the top manual in the swell. And then I'm going to have a, another flute, uh, eight foot and four both in the grate. So they'll talk back and forth as we go along through uh, this lovely pastorat. So our last piece is a portion of an organ sonata by uh, Felix Mendelssohn. 
and this is organ sonata number two. And I have played this as a postlude on uh, quite a few occasions. Um, and it is uh, going to be loud. So um, it, it Allegro, my, yeah, I'm not, my Italian's not good. Maestoso e vivace, which uh, translates to cheerful, majestic, and lively. So we are going to try and be all three of those. The lively part might be a challenge for me, but we will see. There are, this is uh, manuals and pedals, and there are uh, a bunch of pedal runs that, um, it just, just listen for them, just listen for the, the booming. Listen to, and you'll hear it. Anyway, it's not quite that fast, but I hope you enjoy this. Um, and let's see, eight and four. Yep, we are doing both of those. All right, we are going to pull out all the stops. And that is where the, that term comes from, by the way. Everybody knows that I'm fairly unconventional. And so y'all came to listen to me, but if you flip over your um, program, you will see that I have also included something for you. So what I would like to do, I know Richard had originally asked me, is there any Christmas music? And I said, no, because that's not what I was preparing for. Um, but in the back of my head, I had wanted to do this anyway. 
So if we could, um, for those of you, if you want to stand, that's perfectly fine. Turn around, look at the organ. Um, if we could all sing together, O Come All Ye Faithful. We're going to do three verses, and I am going to uh, <clears throat> take an organ solo in the middle. So much for coming today. Uh, I hope, whoops! I hope you uh, enjoyed yourself and maybe learned a little bit about what organs are all about. Have a good evening.